I worked with some really big companies and I like I was in front of like millionaires and very successful people selling uh, wow, how very, far are you falling in yeah. front of us? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now I he's was, doing a podcast. Now you're doing a podcast I was, I was, <laughs> with two miserable Puerto Ricans. <laughs> Welcome to Nadu Podcast, episode number 124. Estamos aquí con tu nuevo host, Baby Kel. Booyah! Kermit Gonzalez, Pedro Lima. Uh, our, our, our buddy Danny Davenport is not with us today. He is sweating it out at Rockfest Daytona. The dude decided to go to an outdoor rock festival Oof. that is three nights, but he decided to go... Yeah. No, both. He is doing the three it nights. He is. I was gonna say he is doing three. He went yesterday, today, and Bro. Sunday. Woof. Daytona. You ever done? You ever done like uh, music festivals? Dude, I did uh, own concert that they had here in Orlando, and I think it was like three hours in. I had to go. My legs me estaban doliendo. <laughs> yeah. it was hot. I was sweating. Like I was not built What's for that. Was it Spanish? Yeah, it was a uh, vibra urban. I think it was. Okay. Yeah. I've done the the sanse. Oh, the Sansa. The Sansa, yeah. when they used to do it at uh, at uh, Festival Park. And to, it's just, me and Kermit were talking about it. Yeah. It's it's bananas. It's it's just always crowded, but they always bring, like, the same acts. I've seen Fiela La Vega so many effing <laughs> <Yeah>. times. <laughs> Puerto Rican power. Yeah. And uh, then, uh, what are those, the, the, the Puerto Rican Teletubbies? Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, what is it called? Uh Oh my God! My, the, my nephews were watching it. La Maquina. They have a frog. They have a frog. Yeah, bro. I'll find out. What <laughs> I'm trying to think. I can't even. I don't even know. You just I, make something. Were you on? Were you on acid at no, the party? No, no, I don't do you, acid. Oh, there, were you on? I saw a frog. Were, yeah. yeah. I no, saw there's a goddamn frog. <laughs> <laughs> He's on ecstasy at the at the festival. There's frogs and there's dogs walking. No, there's God not Pedro. No, I gotta Pedro. Find it. That's just a person wearing a green shirt. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and right? that, that, lady, always, that looks like a frog. <laughs> that lady might look like a dog, but she's not a dog, okay? Yeah, it's <laughs> always like nice. a, there's always somebody in a, a mascot outfit of a coqui with a Puerto Rican flag. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> Alguien vestido de plátano with a Dominican flag. <laughs> You're over there yelling at the lady. Atención, guy. atención. That's, that's, a, that's a band? That's a, that's, a, that's a kid TV show. Mm. And it's, it's like, you know, the characters wear green shirt. Purple shirt, okay. yellow so shirt, like a like a Teletubby version. Yeah, put type. the Spanish version. Of, okay. Ah, be say, hey, hey, get the fuck out of my city. <laughs> get out of here. Get out. Sesame yeah. Street, or give me the Plaza Sesamo, which is different than Sesame Street, but it's the same as Sesame Street because we don't have Big Bird. We have this green uh, parrot. Okay. Yeah, that's Look not the up. same video with the Coco G, Coco G, Remember the little mouse? Do, topo G, Topo, Topo G, Topo G, the, the, the little mouse. Yeah, no, that's an Argentinian. That's Argentinian thing. That's a Nazi lover, bro. Don't bring, <laughs> don't bring that Nazi rat into the Puerto Rican or Hispanic atmosphere. We hate Nazis. We're not for the Nazis. Not at all. Not at all. No, not at all. Bro. It makes that clear. <laughs> So, Kyle, are you? Are you? T- tell us about uh, yourself. Uh, you born where? Miami. You were born in Miami. <laughs> See, I told you, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah, welcome, was, welcome born. to the club, bro. <laughs> born in Miami. Okay. Amer- Americanized Puerto Rican. Americanized Puerto Rican. I was born Rican. in New York. New he was York. born in El Paso, Texas. El Paso, Texas. Yeah. Damn. Okay, that's pretty much like New York, Florida, Mexico. Tex- yeah, Mexico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you had a lot of Cuban influence. Yeah, well, the thing is, I was born in Miami, but I was there for, like, maybe just a couple of weeks. Okay. So, oh. I, it's like... it's. So, is your yeah, mom, was, like, partying in Calle Ocho and just, just said, ah, I, it's time to I, go? It's literally, like, yo creo que they went there, she had me, and then just went back to Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. So, you grew up in Puerto Rico? Yeah, I grew up in Puerto Rico. It's just, you know, I was born in Miami, but in reality, yeah. I was, like, raised in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Okay. I was born in New York. I was raised in Puerto Rico. But it was like three years before my parents said, "Let's do the reverse Puerto Rican thing." Right. Let's move back and to Puerto Rico. Back. I was yeah. born in Texas, raised in every military base from Germany yeah. to Kentucky, oh, yeah, to <laughs> everywhere in California. So, so at least yours was your parents came to party. They had you. They had me. <laughs> Patra. You know, bon Patra. Dale. Yep. And I was there. I was in Puerto Rico till about fourteen before I came over here. Okay. 
But you, they, in your house, did they speak English? Or? Yeah, so my dad's an English teacher in Puerto Rico. Oh, no, sure. okay. So, yeah, so at the same time that, uh, you know, he was teaching us English because it's me and my sister, my mom was, like, talking to us in Spanish. So my dad didn't really let us talk Spanish, and then my mom doesn't know English. So it's como que I can only talk to her in Spanish. Oh, dude, yeah. that's... <laughs> What a dynamic! I was gonna say what what a cross cross yeah. the streams. Yeah, <laughs> like the fight. Whenever the dad wanted to talk shit about mom, yeah. they'd be like, "Yo, your mom's acting up. Don't <laughs> don't ask me for shit. <laughs> I'll beat you." ¿Qué te estás diciendo? No, no, que los nenes se están portando bien. Se van a cortar temprano. No, but literal, literal. That's how literally that's how it was. See, I remember like in my house it was we spoke English. We moved to to Carolina. My, my brother and sister are, are full New Yorkans, but it's only English. Uh, th- like, I, all I remember is English, and then going to school, and then learning Spanish through school. Right. Yeah. School. See, for me in school, like my school, I, I went to like this little private school that was like trailers. It was like three trailers. <laughs> there wasn't even that many students. Que literalmente it was like first and second grade together, third and fourth grade were together. <laughs> But it was all in English, but get under no missionaries that had came from like Uganda and they went to Seiba. They built up these like three little trailers, and that's where my parents Time out, school, bro. <laughs> Time the fuck out. <laughs> Are you from Seiba? No, I'm from Fajaldo. Oh. But like I was going to school in Seiba because I'm like, I was living in Fajaldo, but like borderline Seiba. Yeah, because my family's from Seiba. Oh, for real? And if you're from Seiba, <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. your family, my family, no, each other. apparently my family yeah. from Seba, un compinch, like they have like a. They're the community, bro. I mean, if it, you go to Seba, there's literally like just par de casas, yeah. couple of chickens, and just a whole hills. bunch of hills, land, like bro, that. steep ass hills too. Yeah, our house, they still probably still how house. I gotta go to Puerto Rico, bro. I only never been, been as a child. Oh, as a child, but bro. as an adult, I've never been able to go and enjoy it. You gotta go. Uh, yeah, you I still know. go. You still go back, right? Yeah, now I do. I go back, like, because my parents live over there. Uh, so I go back, like, every three, four months. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, my, my mom, I have a little sister. My mom and my dad, they all live in Puerto Rico. My aunt, everybody. So you grew up in Puerto Rico, 14. You come, you move here, I imagine, with your family. Well, I move over here with my mom and my older sister and then my barely just been born little sister. My okay. dad se quedó allá trabajando, but he would come visit us, like, once every two months, once a month, whenever he could. Yeah, he said, hey, these kids need an actual building. They can be graduating from three, <laughs> <laughs> three trailer homes. Three trailer I can't be homes. having no, my... But it's funny because... Fucking diploma comes in a, in a, <laughs> in a mata de platano here. <laughs> Congrats. No, but uh, after, after I was in that school, I, like, I never went to an actual middle school. And I've never shared this to anybody, but uh, I was homeschooled for like middle school. Oh, so I yeah. come. So check this out. I, I go to this trailer park school, Bella, which is like barely any kids. Then I am homeschooled for like middle school. And then I come over here for high school, which everything is so different. Um, hey, I think I'm buildings little... and stairs. You're like, <laughs> am I in a mall? What no, is this? I, I go to the high school and I'm thinking like, this is like some shit out of a movie. Like this is high school music. Yeah. Like, they got a football. And then, you know, I think I'm a little bit, you know, I think I'm social, but in reality, I'm like socially awkward because like, you know, who was I interacting with during those middle school years? Like, you know, who was your like, first friend in <laughs> in school? Uh, the other non speaking English. <laughs> no, no, no. This is very important because you, like, my first my first friend when I when I started is ninth grade. Ninth grade, my first friend was this white, ro- heavy metal rocking kid, and I swear to God, looked like Danny. Had a little dirt stash and right. stuff like that, and we bonded over Metallica. Okay, okay. Because in Puerto Rico, you either tú eres cocoro o, o, o rockero, and I was in the rockero side. Okay, so we bonded off that. That was my first friend. That was your first friend. Yeah. So who is your first? My, friend? my first friend, uh, Wei Cheng. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wei Cheng, like the the China straight. He literally could speak English, Spanish, and like four oh, dialects. Of, oh. But when I'm telling you, he could speak Spanish like como puertorriqueño. Like, okay, de la la luz. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
He's one. Yeah, of, he's a. Uh, he's um. Uh, what do they call him? Jesus Christ. Multilingual. No, <laughs> my dad has a word for it, and it's probably really uh, bad. <laughs> hey, but if it comes from, from your dad, father, yeah, yeah, I, I'm just gonna let that go. <laughs> no, but uh, but uh, yeah, he was he was like my first friend, Wei Cheng Chini though. My bro- my brother's first friend was this Vietnamese kid that didn't speak any English, any Spanish, <laughs> but he would just follow around with my brother, and they they would just. They still have fun and play and stuff like that, and I was kind of like, "How the fuck you, you? How you guys communicate?" Sign language, just, yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. Toys. I can't remember my first friend. <laughs> I know your childhood got kicked yeah, out. I got kicked out of man. <laughs> yeah. Damn, that's sad. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> moving on to people with friends. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he actually he lost his childhood, I don't have my childhood in a now. karate tournament. Oh, for real? Yeah, uh, he got kicked I in got the kicked head. in the head. And I lost my memory of my childhood. So I remember every everything up to my, my like middle school. I was like eighth grade and on. But everything else is fuzzy. Who is your friend Damn. when your memory came back? I know. Who is that first? Yeah, friend? who's that <laughs> one? My Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Wait, which one? Which one? Uh, uh, Mikey. Mikey. I, okay, Mikey. He Mikey. understands me. <laughs> Just, yeah. I don't remember. Jesus Christ. I don't remember my first friend. Really? Yeah, that's bad. Like, I remember my first friend from kindergarten. Uh, and it's weird. He's, he he even moved down here. You keep in contact with him? I don't keep in. I mean, we if. if we, Are you Facebook friends? If we talk, we can catch up memories and we're cool like that. That's wild. Yeah. Like, I don't have to keep in contact with somebody to keep that friendship membership kind of yeah. deal. Like, you yeah. know, if you stop yeah. talking to somebody and then. Three months later, you talk to them, it feels Classic like you just, nothing. yeah. But I feel like you can only do that with, like, certain people. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, certain people you can. And others, it's like, oh, I haven't talked to you in three years. Like, I don't even know who you are. Or three months, I don't yeah. even know who you are anymore. Yeah, those are called my friends that uh, kind of went off the deep end. <laughs> they just, yeah. They're just doing their own little thing. <laughs> so Yeah, show up six years later. Where you been? Ah, I, was, yeah. I was out. And then you find out he was arrested on some <laughs> He's arrested. very suspicious charges. Yeah. <laughs> And you kind of be like, delete? Delete? <laughs> have a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, bro, delete those, bro. <laughs> Trust me, yeah. they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Así me pasa, like, uh, when I started uh, gaining some momentum on social media, I used to have, like, I would do lives, and, like, people from back in high school, and even when I was growing up in Puerto Rico, they'll be like, yo, Kel was one of my best friends growing up. Like, we ate lunch together. And I'm like, we didn't eat lunch together. Nah. Like, I was on the table on this side, you were on the table on that side, but we didn't eat lunch together. But, uh, yeah, that's... That, that that happens. So. Yeah, so you are you are definitely. Are, you, are we calling it influencer uh, influence? Do you hate? Do you I like do that hate, word? I was, do you like that, that word? word? Seems weird to me. Yeah, tell me what you like. Hey, what do you like? Um, you like? Are, are you an yeah. artist? Because I would say you definitely are a personality slash celebrity. I mean, to be honest, like I never when I like it's weird because I didn't when I started doing what I was doing, which is making comedy skits. I was just looking for comedy, and I was like, you know what? I want to do comedy. Now, what alternatives or alternativa do I have? Alternatives. I don't even know if that's... No, I like it. I like that. That's Spanish sniper. <laughs> Spanish <laughs> sniper <laughs> fucking <laughs> got you good. <laughs> alternative. I was going to keep rolling like I didn't just make up a word, but... Um, but um, I was like, I want to do comedy. And I was watching a lot of stand-up y todo, but I was like, what's the... You know, what's the... I didn't know anything about like going into stand-up or just doing anything in stand-up. Um, or just comedy in general, but I would see that people were doing comedy videos on social media. So I was like, you know what? Let me just start using social media to do comedy. But if social media didn't exist, like the idea for me, like what I wanted to do was just straight comedy. So my whole mindset was, oh, I'm just going to do comedy and then I'll use social media so people can see my comedy. And then whatever that's called, whether it's like an influencer and stuff, because the thing is, I don't really roll like regular typical influencers like i've been around other influencers i'm like damn i'm not a good influencer because these are people that like they'll be on their phone a lot you know any moment like oh it's wacky like they're always like on like like you said earlier believe it or not most people don't know this but i'm barely on my phone like i'll literally make the content i'll schedule it out 
couple days in, in advance yeah and i'm not there like you're I'm, living you're living you're living a true life yeah like i'm Good. most most of my time is spent like writing comedy skits seeing where i can get inspiration to write you know some new skits to me i love the the creation process the the comedy you know creation and seeing people laugh so like that's why i don't really consider myself an influencer like i consider my more of myself like a a comedian and like a storyteller an entertainer yeah yeah, yeah an entertainer 100 percent. storytelling like that's that to me is what i like but oh you know so it, at the end of the day la gente you know they'll label me oh you're the tiktoker oh tu eres el instagram oh youtuber you know the older generation ah tu eres un youtuber the, you, the newer <laughs> generation <laughs> ah, youtuber you know? youtuber bro <laughs> YouTuber. but to say the older generation <laughs> yeah the older generation youtuber tu eres un youtuber <laughs> younger generation ah tu eres el tiktoker ah yeah. tu eres el chamaquito de la <laughs> Somebody take the seven year old away from here. <laughs> nah, but uh, yeah, so I don't really consider myself influencer, but um to each their own, like whatever yeah. you know, whatever you identify with <laughs> is yeah. what you identify with. Cause you did you blow up during COVID? <laughs> no, I didn't actually. I blew up um the year after COVID, so twenty twenty one. Cause that's when I discovered you. Yeah, I discovered you in twenty twenty. But during oh, 2020? COVID. Yeah, because I was just like, you know, we had nothing oh, else to do. Oh, shit, yeah. And that's so, when I, I was like, yo, this guy is funny. And I remember sending it to yeah. you a couple of like, yo, this guy is funny. But then I then I started like kind of like stalking you. I'm like, man, a lot of these locations seem Orlando. And I'm looking <laughs> at the signs. I'm not even watching your videos anymore. I'm like, is that John Young? Yeah, it's John, it's John Young. Young. motherfucker's playing geocaching. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm playing. And he's I'll, like, put, you're like his Pokemon. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to catch that I'm catch that. I'll catch his Reekin. And then, and then that's when I hit you up. I was like, yo, you in Orlando? You're like, yeah. I was like, I know oh. that check catching place. <laughs> I know it. I found you, bro. <laughs> that's on Pershing. Damn, that's crazy. So you... So you you've been you've been seeing myself since 2020 because mm -hmm. 2020 was very different for me to what, what like 2020 to a lot of us Kel. To a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't mean a lot of us <laughs> no literal but wow okay yeah yeah that blew that but was did that you, was that your your like how did you stumble into that creative thing so you go to school and you graduate you did yeah. you go to college no i didn't go to college you didn't go to college did you have uh, uh something that you wanted to do yeah so i you know growing up you know padre puertorriqueño you got to go to school yeah. you know my dad went to college he's got his master's from yukon and my mom has her bachelor's from some pueblo de puerto rico yeah and um you know everything was like you got to go to school you got to go to school and so i did try like uh half a semester and it just wasn't for me. And then I just dropped out. It wasn't for you because you didn't know what you want to do. No, nah, I just like I remember <laughs> the story pretty much goes. I was in math class and I'm listening to like one of these motivational podcasts. Uh -huh. And I think it was uh, Les Brown was like or was it Eric Thomas? One of those motivational guys was like. If you're not doing what you love, you are literally committing spiritual suicide. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit, I'm committing spiritual suicide. So as soon as I heard that, I literally got up and just walked out of class and I never went back. Actually, I did go back to the parking lot for like the rest of the semester <laughs> just to pretend like I was going to school so my mom wouldn't find out. So I, was, wow. I was still waking up to go to the college, but I was just like falling asleep in the parking lot, just staying in my car until like class was over. How did you how did you break it to them? To my mom, honestly, so what I was when doing... When they realized, Oye, papi, tú no tienes clases. Oh, my gosh. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> Ma, look what I'm doing. I'm yeah. doing videos. What? Well, well, the thing was, at the time, I was actually... Uh, I was really heavy into uh, Herbalife. I was like... Selling <laughs> All right. Life. Hey, man, it's been not, dude. Episode 124. Hey. <laughs> Yo, I've been, I'm over here spilling stuff I, <laughs> most people don't even know. But, dude, what I'm telling you, like, I was heavy into Herbalife. Like, I know you're kind. I know you're kind. I know you're kind. I know you're kind. I was like, you know, I was I was brainwashed, like, heavy brainwashed. So I was like, you know, and, and Herbalife is like, oh, you don't got to go to school. Like, you can make this into a living. So I was like, you know, while I was, um, you know, in you know supposed to be in school i was just like going around college on um, the campus and like trying to talk to people about joining herbalife and this guy is the jehovah <laughs> witness of of supplements oh my yeah. gosh yeah. bro I, I hey can i interest you in your better health yeah, yeah. so what's it do ah. hey yeah no i i, I also like did I you have your pitch do you remember your pitch yeah what's the, give it yeah sell what's us. your pitch sell us sell me some I herbal life. i don't even remember oh man. It's, come it's been, on you it's know. been so many years no. like no, then, yeah. no, i was like 18 i can't even remember dude it was such a while but oh 
I was yeah, I was just going to college campus. I think I'd be like, um, did you have a demographic you would target? I mean, you look at the fat people and be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- but guy. all right, there you go. Come yeah. on, pitch, Tacho. <laughs> I swat that <laughs> shit like King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, you could. I, it was. I was kind of like you know when you see those like animal animal videos where it's yeah, like, you were looking lion. for the wounded, <laughs> wounded gazelle. <laughs> I'm looking for the wounded gazelle. I'm like, oh man, I say gordito. I that's, <laughs> that's my next victim. And I'm, you know, I'd, I'd invite them to like. Uh, like a free fit camp like hey you know what we're doing like a, a free fit camp if you want to come it's yeah. called a gym you know? <laughs> yeah but you know we disguised hey, we'll give them a jump bro go ahead let's see how many you can do now hey this is what i want you to do i'm gonna give you just a week of herbalife try it and when you come back you're gonna double that <laughs> well, I, we start off with three days. I would give him a three day trial. Uh-huh. Of course. <laughs> Le daba los tres días, and, and you know, and then from there they would be tecatero. like. Un tecatero. Honestly, I, like, I would get people to drop, like, I don't know, like seven pounds in those three days, and I don't even know how. Yeah, because those pills are fucking eating the inside <laughs> you're of you. Sell, yeah, you're so, selling them. So selling I'm like, bleach. I'm like, you know, and I'll be like, and I'll, like, for example, if I would see somebody that, like, I never lost, like, yo nunca fui gordito to lose weight. I was really scrawny, and then I, like, built a whole bunch of muscle. Yeah. But for people that get más gordito, I would, like, try and find a picture of somebody that I knew that did Herbalife that kind of <laughs> looked like them and be like, hey, you know this person? And they'll be like, and I'm like, look what they look like now. And then that's kind of, like, how I would go about my Here pitch. Here we do Photoshop He's before Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah, yeah, he was lying. Nah, He's go ahead. Lying. <laughs> One picture is a white guy, the next one's a black yeah, guy. Yeah, it's Arnold, Arnold, <laughs> Arnold with the bikini, and it's... <laughs> Kel's picture, 18-year-old <laughs> Kel's picture like this. <laughs> nah, but pero, pero yeah, I, I even went door-to-door. It's door natural, to door. papi. That's all <laughs> natural. Yeah. Con los supplements. No, but I even, I even went door-to-door, dude. I went door-to-door just like uh, trying to sell these three-day trials. I was at the light, a la luz aquí from Apopka. I used to be at those lights just like, hey, do you want to try a three-day trial? You want to try a three-day trial? Como los Okay, homeless people. I guess, yeah, yeah, push, pushing the people are selling flowers now yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. I was, yeah. my, my corner. Yeah. My corner. Yeah. Herbal uh, life. He's doing a gang sign of yeah. HL. Yeah, H- HL. <laughs> yeah, no, but that, that was kind of like what I was doing during college. And then it got to the point where I started actually making, like, I think it was like $1,500 uh, monthly. Okay. And so um, that's when I kind of like broke it to my mom. Like, mira, mommy, this is what I'm doing. This is how much money I'm making. Why are you go to college if we work so hard? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, like, what's your what's your real name? Do you, can you Kelvin? Just, yeah, is yeah. it Kelvin? Do you have a middle Maldonado. name? Maldonado. Middle name? Oh, middle name Enrique. Kelvin Enrique Maldonado. No, so so what happened was my mom. She told me straight up. She was like, if you're not gonna go to college, you can't live. You can't live under this roof. Toma. Y paquiti me mandó, me mandó para la calle. So from there, I was like. I vended my herbal life. I vended my herbal life. No, I. I bro, Supplement I you king not. over I here. Not, bro. I was literally like. Get kicked out to the streets and be like, hey, time to sling some of these stuff. Damn, he, he got kicked out to the streets and not even selling real street shit. Just yeah. <laughs> no, just, yeah, just some powder, pero. <laughs> And then I was just like, from there, I was like living from place to place, you know, crashing at friends' house until I found like this place in Craigslist. And everywhere I would go, bro, I would bring me me containers that are black everywhere, just trying to sell them. Literal. You were just renting from house to house. Just, that's infiltrating to be like, this works for me, Herbert. Another client. Another guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, bro, I'm telling you, bro. I see me. Wow. So what, what pushed you into, what made you curious into the entertainment world because that's that's an itch that a lot of people have that we all climb for and it's afraid to scratch it per se yeah and when they scratch it and it feels good then they just get fucking addicted you know what i mean yeah no but mira so you know i I was doing the herbal life the reason i was doing the herbal life was because i wanted to do something that had to do with business sales and then from there i started my own uh marketing business and i was a salesperson for different companies and i i worked with some really big companies and i like i was in front of like millionaires and very successful people selling uh, wow, how very, far you fallen in yeah. front of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now I you're was, doing a podcast. Now you're doing a podcast. I was, I was <laughs> with two miserable Puerto Ricans. <laughs> That's only got 100 <laughs> followers. 
man. This son of a bitch got 151K. <laughs> We're over here. Hey, hey, uh, follow, subscribe, yeah. please. And, and me and Danny are like, hey, we just want to quit doing this shit. Just, <laughs> don't follow us. I just want to make enough to pay the water bill. <laughs> no, no. No, but in, in ese tiempo, like, I, I, was, I was doing very well for myself. I was, like, maybe 20, 21. And uh, I had then I, I started my own company and I was making really good money just myself getting all these uh, clients. And that, that was like my life. I was just a salesperson. Yeah. And you were I, always an entrepreneur kind of. Yeah, I was always an entrepreneur. Yeah. I worked for timeshare. I did like I even got my real estate license. I was in car sales like almost. God every, damn, every, dude, you did every <laughs> slummy fucking I was job. Gonna say, damn, you yeah. were slummy. Yeah, every, <laughs> there is. every like when it comes to sales, like. <laughs> I was, dude, I was that person over the phone, uh, you know, I would, I would like outbound calls trying to sell you like vacation packages. I worked at these little <laughs> tiny <laughs> ass call centers that one day I remember I was there for like a month. I showed up one day to work. Boom. Everything was gone because <laughs> it was like fraudulent yeah. stuff, you know? Oh, they I, I used to work in one when I worked at the hotels downstairs was one of those timeshare things. And we could hear the arguments because they didn't get paid that week. <laughs> And you were here, fuck you, God, we're, we're, we're like taking phone calls. We're like, no, no, eso, gotcha, let's go, let's go. That, that was like one of the, it was one of the most fun jobs because, man, like. Yo, all all it, different kinds of people. Dude. You would get all different kinds of people. And I was crazy on that phone. Yo, go, yeah, say, say, phony. I would just. Did you have a voice? I would have every kind of voice. Like if I would get people from Gatlinburg, I'll be like, hey there, Mary, how are you doing today? <laughs> And then, you know, if just anything. And I remember I had this uh, this Indian lady on the phone and I, and I just started oh, no. using like an Indian accent. And, all, <laughs> and then I, and she was like, I have to talk to my husband. And I was like, and I, I just I went crazy with that call. But they loved me and I made a lot of money. I mean, I was making like two grand a week just with my legs popped up. I go going the telephone, you know, just talking BS. Did you ever have somebody in the call center that, that sit with you and you guys were like, like, that was your buddy and stuff. Yeah, Were yeah. you trying to make each other laugh? Yeah, well, the thing was like, it was like a game. I'll be like, you know, uh, I'll be like, you know what, ma'am? Like, I totally get it. I wish I could lower the package for you, but you know what? Let, let me go ahead and get my supervisor. Now, listen, I'm a little bit new here and can you just kind of let him know like that I'm doing a good job? Like, I would really appreciate it. Like, this is me like a year into that job and then I'll put my homie on. He'd be like, hey, this is Sean with uh, Westgate Resorts. I just want to find out first before we continue was, you know, was Kelvin doing a good job? And then like, this was just like us going back and forth. I would be his manager. He would be like, it was just crazy. We man. used to do that. We used to also play the game five words and they'll be like, write five words. And in this phone call, I have to use those five words. <laughs> so it even it even got to the point that I, I work for the power company and my buddy I'm taking Spanish calls. And he wanted me. I go, yo, let's play the give me a word. What word do you want me to use? And he goes, e <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you want me to use that? I. So I'm telling this lady, oh, no, señora, you know, tiene que, subir, tiene que bajar la temperatura de, de, de su aire acondicionado porque si no, te van a espetar un umbil. <laughs> and papá, I'm like, dude, we used to play that game all the time. Or just long ass words that made no sense. No, I was going to say just, just random and words. And you just got to incorporate it in there. Just <laughs> check it out. And that's how you would kill time at a call center. Yeah, dude, I no, could never work at a call center. It's, um... I honestly like it. It I, I feel like anybody that can work in that environment, at least in some of the most toxic environments that I worked at, it was like it felt like um you're dead time, inside. Later, I, but, you know, <laughs> at, at the time, good point. Good point, Kermit. At, at the time, había salido la película de Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, uh, guys, so at the time, like that movie had just came out, so you know, oh, we were so young. You're, you're thinking about like some girls doing blow off their yeah, butt. We, no, yeah, we that, were like, yeah, that didn't como que era como que, <laughs> ah, you know, this but, could um, be us. No, <laughs> selling like, penny stocks. And then we were like 21, so it yeah. como que, you know, pero, so I was doing all that, but never in a million years would, did, if you ever told me, oh, why don't you do like acting? Why don't you do comedy? Why don't you do, I'm yeah. like, are you crazy? And then it wasn't <laughs> until. I'm um, not fucking going. Yeah, <laughs> no, but oh, even like even I think around 2019, I wanted to make like. He's doing Wolf. Of, he's doing Wolf of Wall Street. 
Fuck. I'm not fucking leaving. Oh, I'm, not I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. I didn't even catch <laughs> you. Know, you did. <laughs> That's what I was laughing. I thought you. <laughs> and I'm thinking about another line of, Dude, of that go, movie. I'm going like, through lines in don't my look, head. Don't look at the midgets in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they get very aggressive. I'm picturing these guys just celebrating, but there's no women. It's just them. It's just us. It's no, just we, we, we at an them. alehouse. Yeah. Wearing, wearing jackets. Their parties are Mario Kart <laughs> and soda. Yeah. No, no. Literal. Pero... <laughs> Pero you never thought. No, never, never in a million years did I that I think I was gonna go into anything. And it, I did do uh like I was doing videos at a time, the YouTube, like teaching people how to do entrepreneurship, how to do sales. So it was like I was doing video on YouTube, but era más como que serio. And then it wasn't until about 2019 I was in a relationship, and then we ended up breaking up. Oh, then, she ruined oh, it. No, 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 no. No, it transformed. No, it, it transformed them. That, that's mm. when that, I felt. Was like that a I, heartbreak? Was that a heartbreak? It was. It was a heartbreak. Pero llorate, llorate. Llore. Yeah. You want to yeah. call her out? You want to call her out? Yeah. Yell, yell at her. No. Do you still talk to her? You still talk to her? Yeah, like we're, we're Facebook cool. friends. Like it wasn't no ah, way. No way. It wasn't. It wasn't anything that was like. It was just like situation. Like we were just trying to survive. And then it got to the point where it was just hard because I was uh, running my business and she was helping me pay for all the bills. And I'm over here trying to keep this dream alive. And it got to the point where it's like a year in and like we're struggling and everything. And she just like, she can't do it anymore. If you're not going to take you these know? supplements, it's out. It's out. You got to take this herbal life. <laughs> you either in or out. out. Herbal for life. That's how <laughs> very culty, very culty. <laughs> and then in that moment, yo, you know, I was just like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I got tired of doing sales. I got, I don't want to do this anymore. And I had a un primo mío, really, a como mejor amigo, and he was like, cabrón, why don't you do comedy? Tú eres bien chistoso. Tú eres bien funny. Siempre que tú tienes unas historias locas. And I was like, that's it's always a family member. And I was like, you know what? Let me try comedy. I feel like I started dabbling to like, well, what's a good way to go into comedy? Oh, comedy videos. Um, and then that's when like, and then I start, you know, kind of doing some comedy skits. Bien charro. Just really terrible, right? But <clears throat> then I realized that like, then I had like this epiphany where I kind of had like, I just played my entire life on like Rewind. And I realized when I was a little kid. I was doing uh, talent shows, plays in high school. I did drama. They, I even did like this little stand-up in school. In Herbalife, I did presentations in front of people. <laughs> that damn Herbalife. <laughs> and, then, and then, believe it or not, I thought that the entire time that I was in sales for all these years and the reason that I did so well in sales was because, oh, I'm so convincing and I'm like, I can trick anybody into anything. And I realized that that wasn't it. It was because I could make somebody laugh. And so sometimes I would walk into a... Uh, a business and they'll be like oh we don't want solicitors we don't want solicitors get the fuck out of here i'll be like oh thank fucking god i hate those people too and then it'll be like what <laughs> like what the heck and and then we just talk they'll laugh and i feel like when you can make somebody laugh it eases the tension and it's like people want to laugh so i think yeah. that was the tool that made me a good salesperson it wasn't that i was convincing it's just that i would i could make somebody laugh or smile over but making the people laugh in, in in general is is like I, I used to say if i can make this girl laugh that's that's a wrap. a wrap it's a wrap it's, it's a, a wrap. reason for it so <laughs> it's, it's a wrap, the wrap. So cuando me meto, i'll be a clown for this bitch uh, <laughs> yeah. un until she falls into this trap into this trap into claro, this. Claro. Yeah. you just gotta you just gotta get a laugh out of them and i'm telling you que cuando when I started realizing that I wanted to do comedy and I had this like epiphany, I was like, dude, I'm, I'm right here where I'm supposed to be. And, you know, growing up, it makes sense. Like growing up, literally, uh, my dad was always playing stand up like Martin Lauren, Steve Harvey. Like that's what I was watching in Puerto Rico. Just stand up, yeah. stand up. And for entertainment, for fun, like I wasn't watching movies. Maybe I was watching like comedy movies, but I was just watching stand up. I loved it. And I was going to uh, improv, you know. Uh, for years, uh, just looking at the comedians, just for entertainment, not because I ever thought I'd ever want to do anything. Really, in, in it never, comedy. it never, it never hit you. It never like, hit me. I'd be like, I'd be like, but I would when I would see the comedians, I'll be like, oh, that was a good, that was a good setup to this punch, and like I'm like, oh, that was good. I'm like, ah, damn, I feel like they could have done, like they could have done this, like, but in my head, like I'm not paying attention. Yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. But this is like what's happening in my head or your creative mind. It's like, yeah, yeah. Suelta me, suelta me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, let herbal so, life go let's get into <laughs> this life, life. Go and let, let's, let's get into this life yeah i see fue que, you know i started dabbling into comedy 
Um, and then I just decided to go more of like the skit route and sketch comedy, which is uh, funny, man. I gotta give it to you, bro. Not a lot of people I watch. Yeah, dude. Like, you, you, Le, Le Juan James, and the other one, man, the big set guy. There's always oh like, the the other the um, con la novia. No, with his mom. He does it with his mom. The skit. Dominican guy. Dominican guy. Yeah, yeah. Man, now no. he's doing voice voiceovers over. Over animals oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Man, I forgot his name. I feel bad. I watch him so much. No, nah, you will edit it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. His name is. Uh, <laughs> just put it. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Radel Ortiz. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. that guy. Yeah, that that guy. Hilarious. <laughs> I hope you do edit it, and it's a very bad edit. <laughs> and it's just like Carlito Ponce. <laughs> no, but but yeah, that's kind of. Did you ever try stand up? No, I, I well, so in 2020, so in 2020, <laughs> I was just trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do in comedy. My videos aren't hitting. Then I tried doing, I was doing stories on lives. People were like, yo, you're fucking hilarious. Like, I don't podcast. So I started a podcast. Then I did uh, like a, a stand up school. <laughs> Every time he goes on live. <laughs> In the live, era que la gente como que yeah. that's where... You used to hate when I go on because he will always wear the same shirt. Yeah. <laughs> I would call him out. Yeah. Hey, man, you don't do laundry? Hey, no, man. But my friends would always make... Like, the thing is, like, I if you look at my closet, I got three pairs of shoes. I got these sandals, I got white shoes, and I got some running shoes the that I never man used. is a minimalist, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. Like I, I, hey, I, listen, Bill Gates. Or not Bill Gates, Um, Steve Jobs. Relax. Bro, <laughs> I you don't need all that shit. Hey, man, you need more than three shirts, bro. Lo que pasó fue que I was... <laughs> listen, I, at some point in my life, I was so broke, <laughs> and I was moving from place to place that it's like... And I was, I, I'd puppy, rather not have puppy, a lot of things. Don't explain yourself <laughs> you know? over the son of a fucking karate dojo owner. <laughs> He's over here. He's over here living pay to pay. I'm over. Hey, poor. Hey, poor guy. Yeah. Get a new shirt, you, yeah. you poor bastard. No, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, no. Uh, but um, so I started kind of like dabbling in that side of comedy and sketch comedy. Though I did the lives, uh, and then I did like this stand up school, and I was liking it. Itolo, but but uh, I got sax. Yeah, it's sax. Who's your teacher? Ali. 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 Ali Flores, which I ended up um actually interviewing him when I launched my podcast. But then when we had to do our um. I guess our like presentation or whatever. I ended up stand getting, up. Yeah, I ended up getting COVID. I couldn't even finish like half the classes. Oh, that sucks. And then from there, like I had a lot of things happen in my life where like I had to move, and then I ended up moving. I ended up getting another forty-hour work week job doing sales over the phone, and I was like, ah, oh, whatever. <laughs> Him with and this sales. Whole, <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. Whatever with this whatever whole comedy thing. Whatever you needed thing. to do, bro. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, yo, I, I at that point I quit comedy. I just like whatever. It's not for me. And then it wasn't until twenty twenty one Christmas. I got sick. I spent it by myself. I was. Yo tenía todo en eso. I had my own place. I had the car that I've always wanted. Oh, I wish um, we had a sad button. No, but don't we? Go. We don't have one. No, damn. I had it. Put it on the list. <laughs> Yo estaba te digo. I was super like i'm like how can i feel like i got so many things that i've ever wanted but i'm like over here super depressed super triste it's the holidays i'm by myself and i'm just like laying in bed i'm like praying to god and i'm like i don't know what to do anymore in my life like i've tried everything like i'm the person that has tried a hundred things and i have failed in everything in my life and i just don't know what to do and then i was and a voice came from above a home video, cabrón. A home video de TikTok. Ponte, ponte a usar el TikTok, puñeta. Estás está llorando, mamabicho. I heard that voice and I was like, está bien. <laughs> and then I grabbed the phone. I, I, I made a little quick TikTok video. And then the next day it had 20,000 views. And I'm like, that like changed everything for me. I got, I got this little thing inside of me where I was like, what makes a video go viral? So I went back to the last year of every piece of content that I had done, what had done good, what didn't do good. I, I started studying all these uh, comedians online and todo, and I just started breaking it down and I created this little formula. I'm like, let me see if this works. So my next video, I did un video como que impersonating my mom. And I think it was like, de esa misma nostalgia of like not having my family during the holidays is where that kind of burst out of. And I made this video and it just took off. And yeah. then I made another one took off and then from there every video just seemed to hit and go viral with that Man. same formula every single time and then at the time i had a, i have a cousin that um trabajaba in hollywood she's worked on sets like 13 reasons why she worked um, on the set de gotham yeah she came over here because you know todavía she wasn't able to go back to hollywood and she stayed at uh the house that i was staying at too because we had a whole bunch of rooms 
And for that time frame, she was out of a job. She saw that I was trying to learn. She to fucking film. helped you fucking. So out. she taught me how to Set. film, how to how to do different camera angles. So I had like a film school in like three months. She taught me everything that I I could learn, and then I mixed it with like the comedy and learning how to do a setup and punch and how to create just a story. And you know, there's you know, as a, as a comedian, you know that there's jokes and like the way you position things to see if people yeah. grab onto it that's the same thing that i would do with uh with the videos and like sometimes people would laugh people would be like oh dude you left your tags on the shirt ha 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 and i'm like that was placed that's karmic that's so karmic fucking just correcting yeah. stuff yeah yeah that's that's me uh with my uh my spelling i, I do yeah. that on purpose well, i do that yeah i misspell words but there's a, apparently <laughs> there is there is a People do that for engagement for oh engagement, really for engagement yeah they yep. don't misspell a word and People they concentrate on being the the grammar Nazi. Yeah. And oh yeah, that's what I do all the time, guys. No, no, Every time you, you see a video and there's a misspell word, no, no, it's no, because I'm doing it on no, purpose. No, yeah, no, you're, no, you're dumb. You know, you know that, that, that <laughs> happened. That, you go, that happened to me. Uh, one of the very first time, and it and it actually ended up becoming my most viral video. So in Spanish, mama has an accent. On the A, at the final A. Mm -hmm. If not, it's mama. Like, tu vas a mamal. Uh -huh. ¿Me entiendes? So I did a video where I, suck. where I didn't put yeah. the accent <laughs> and the internet destroyed me. It was like, that video <laughs> at the time got 3 million views and it was non-stop comments of, oh my God, mama, ha, ha, ha. He can't even spell right. It was just Jeez. one after <laughs> wow. the other. And I was very insecure because... I can speak fluent Spanish, but grammatically, like, I can't really write Spanish uh, very well. Uh, in fact, all of my videos are scripted all in English, and then I'll translate the video as I'm about to perform it. Yeah. And so I was very insecure about that, but that video became very viral, and I realized it's like, wait, this is working to my advantage, you know, like, being able to put things for people to actually feel like they called it out or they noticed it. And por ahí fue que empezó todo eso. No, that's why you used to wear the same shirts and I used to call you out on live. Yeah, that makes sense. Man, yeah, look, yeah. He's, he's, you he got more, me. He got you. You got me. Got, right, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> he's in a happier he's like, he starts crying. Yeah, yeah that's it. No, and, uh, and believe it or not, like, <laughs> this is funny, but um, for the longest while, uh, yo me ponía la misma ropa, but every time that you saw me with a new shirt, I always actually kept the tags because I was wearing it for, like, a specific video or if I would go to an event just so that I could go return it. Because I didn't have the money to actually gotcha. keep it. So I was like buying stuff at Marshall's and hiding the tags. And I even got an expert bro, like not, taking the little tag That's out. not a new technique. That's not a new Bobby. technique, bro. <laughs> it's been, it's been out for a while. Been a while, bro. Bro. Dude, bro. I thought I had discovered something. Bro, like, okay, we used oh, to go to nightclubs with scotch tape, take the scotch tape, and, and make sure that tag doesn't pop up. Yeah. Because if you have friends... And they see that oh, no, tag. It's, it's over. Yeah, yeah, now you take you it right, right up. Right now it's yours. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's no, crazy. man. Okay, three pale. Yeah. That's, no. that's what good, a journey, man. dude. Yeah. Like, so now you're here. Freaking over 151K followers. Probably. Oh, what's your TikTok? I don't even know your TikTok. TikTok. It's going boy like 400,000. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's good, man. And you're, you're <clears> just linking killing. up. Now, do you feel like you're connecting more to... Island Puerto Ricans or that's that's a great question because um, when I was starting off though every all of my content was in Spanish and my idea was I don't have to try and be famous here in the US when I have a island that has its own economy its own people why don't I just become famous over there so I was making all of my content in Spanish and trying to do it so that the people over there and I'm thinking this whole time esta mi audiencia these are the people that love me and then out of nowhere there's more of us here. <laughs> yeah. I realized, and it happened to me. I go to Puerto Rico, a few people like, oh, baby, Kel, they would recognize yeah. me going to Walmart and stuff. But when I went to New York, I was like, I felt like a celebrity. Like, I, it was so overwhelming. I was like, people were like crying, sharing stories. Um, it was for the uh, New York parade last year, and they even had to uh, have a security porque people were just like. The Puerto Rican parade. Yeah. Okay. Hey, man, where's our parade, huh? Hey, man, relax, hey. relax. I want relax. people crying over me. I don't want hey, that. Yeah. I want it. Where's I've been, my in, I've been at those parades. I want to hear fine. your sad stories. Of how how you you know had a shitty day? Hey, man, but you have more you fun. Laugh. You you have more fun the day before the Puerto Rican Day parade. <laughs> Trust no, me. No. Okay, that was to me very overwhelming. I realized, oh shoot, like this is my people. This is my audience. Yeah. These are the people that. And then you know, when I checked my analytics, I realized 
the majority, the biggest percentage of my audience are actually Chicago, know, Philadelphia, Chicago, those Connecticut. Guys, Connecticut, you know, all these people. And then Puerto I realized, Rican, Connecticut, bro, yeah, actually, we got more Puerto Ricans in Connecticut. The hell are you doing up there? That, yeah, I don't even know, bro. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still confused why they're even in New York. Cause I can't even stand the cold. I'm Oper- like, how Operation do- Bootstrap made that. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> That's- I, I never understood it. And it's funny. Cause when I went to New York, like I, I'm very intimidated by big city. So I go in with a like, Hawaiian shirt <laughs> Literally, I'm dressed something like yeah, lo bien walking, walking through the Bronx. Yeah. And I'm seeing just people eyeing me. I go to the subway and I remember there's like toda esta gente and there's like random como que homeless people just like talking solo. And I remember this, este tipo está en el subway and he's just like, I need everybody to listen up. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm listening, and nobody else moved, and I'm over here like, I'm about to get robbed, like, here you go, and yeah, New York was very, very scary for me, I was like, nah, I'm not, this is definitely not, and I was like, hey, how's it going, and people be like, like, eyeing me, like, como que, que le pasa a este, and it's like, what is happening here, pero definitivamente, uh, my content, because... It's, you know, my content has a lot to do with, like, cosas que hacen Latino, Puerto Ricans. Yeah. You know, when you it's grow up over here. Reminiscing it's reminiscing kind of thing. Everybody has that grandmother. Yeah. Like, you have that video of Grandma Day, number one. Yeah. Arroz habichuela. What you fried, eat, yeah. pork, pork chop, Fried pork chop. Second day, same thing. Same, it, like, same it thing. repeats. Right. But it's porque, you know, growing up over here, you grow up with so many different cultures that you want to represent yours. When you grow up in Puerto Rico and everybody's Puerto Rican, it's not a flex being Puerto it's not Rican. A flex. Like, yeah. it's not anything you have to be proud of when everybody's the same. But when you're over here and you have Mexicans, black, white, um, you know, all kinds of Russians, todo tipo de gente, eh, that's when you realize, like, oh, people want to be prideful. Like, I, when, when I moved over here, yo salía con una novia that she had a Puerto Rican comforter, a Puerto Rican hat, Puerto Rican <laughs> yeah. shirt, Puerto Rican socks. This girl didn't even know Spanish. She never even went to Puerto Rico ever in her life. And I'm like, ¿Qué es esto? Like, what, yeah. what is what is this? You know? And uh, I you think shamed her. You shamed her. You shamed her. Yeah, I shamed her. He dumped her. He dumped her. That's how he dumped her. No, because there's not, <laughs> and, and, it's, it's like that thing que, que existe where it's like, you know, going. like I was born in New York, right? So I'm not technically um, I'm American. Puerto Rican descent, but I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm not accepted fully by the American people. They look at me and it's like, ah, but you're Puerto Rican. Right. But in Puerto Rico, it's the same thing. I think you had that, that, uh, the girl from Chicago, from Chicago. I was that just has thinking the about same, that. that. And I, and I bonded so much with, with that. I, I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm Puerto Rico. I'm not really Puerto Rican. So I'm a person with no flag. Right. Kind of deal. Yeah. But in my heart, I'm, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. And I'm from New York. Claro. Like, like that's that. Those are my flags. I'm conflicted. You're conflicted. Yeah, yeah. with my bro. Este tiene una mezcla del carajo, bro. <laughs> really? Well, it's if you count Puerto... if you count Texas, right? El Paso. So uh-huh. Whatever. But so you're I, American. I, American. Uh, and then my then dad's Puerto Rican. Uh huh. Then my ma- mother's Chinese Dominican. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that's where it went. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's where it hit the hit the yeah. corner. So it's uh yeah. I like to represent whatever I feel like that weekend. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Your father went. Whatever it, movies, whatever movies f- popular. When when Bat Bunny came on WWF or WWE, I was one hundred percent Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Bro, that, that shit was dope. Godly, how be- beautiful that was. That was. Crazy. Did you see that? Do you yeah. watch wrestling on that level? Not, not anymore. When I was growing up, see, but or not, but but you saw that. You yeah, but I, you saw yeah, that. I saw the highlights Whoa. of that event. It's so fue uh, something Bro, the incredible. the pop, the pop of that place. Now I felt like the whole island was there, and then just the energy he came yeah, out with. The energy, the energy. bro. He Dude, just... we Puerto Ricans give an energy that is, and you've seen it on comedy shows. Yeah, that's what I'm like. I, like I like, <laughs> I like Jose Lito, but it's not my style of comedy, right? Okay, but I love the energy that his crowd. Brings. brings you know what i mean and and i'm appreciate even though it's not my style of comedy i understand it i respect 100 percent. boom when i brought chente down for the improv before covid i went to that show you did yeah the improv yeah yeah so but i had chente and it was like great show and that energy is just different, bro. Yeah, it, it really is. And it every really time is. I would do like a Spanish show, that it's just a different energy that you get. And it's kind of like, 
I hate this. I mean, yeah, like when we do the whole Slito show, and I, I've done it probably, I think almost like five, maybe six times now. Yeah. It's always, I, w- I, I get to that level in my head, I'm going, I'm not going to do this. Because it's stupid for me to be on that stage because I've done it already and people don't care. Bro, it's a, it's always a different yeah. high energy and they still give you the same love. And yeah. even if they even if they heard the joke, they know the yeah. joke. I go to they, the show uh, and I don't want to do the show. And these and yet the mama is <laughs> just go up there, just go up, just go up, it, go bro. up. It's like, dude, it's his show. I don't want to be. Yeah. <laughs> and pa pa pa. Chacho, sube just five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, and then uh, Will will fuck around to Ah, Pedro, just go up, just go up to five minutes, do five minutes. We did it in Tampa, we did it here. There's it's, so much fun. The vibe is yeah. Just the so the fun. energy that like that Puerto Rican that mm-hmm. the, the you know I even think like Latino, but especially Puerto Rican like you know that that energy that it brings is something unbelievable. Like I'm telling you, like los eventos que yo he ido, um, it's something. It's incredible. Like, I don't even know how to put it into words. And then to see that in WWE, I think WWE was like, what is this? Yeah. You know, que es esto? Like, they, didn't, I mean? not, they, didn't, they didn't realize the diamond they had. Yeah. Like, they was just like, whoa, whoa, wait yeah. a second. They didn't go, oh, money, money. money. This Big is time. Money, you know? Big time. But it's, I didn't even know they didn't, they didn't even go, well, how many years has it been since they did a pro? Uh, did that event it's in Puerto a, Rico. It's been a while. At least 13 years and they plus. Did it, and they just did it at the Coliseum. Yeah, they, they did it they like some, like, whatever. It. It they can't do event. it in a stadium yet because they don't have like the 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 high value stadiums that we have claro. here. You know what I mean? But they, if. And you know what's even crazy about that? And which people, I don't, I don't know, a lot of people understand. They didn't lose power. <laughs> they didn't lose power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't lose that was power. amazing. That was amazing. I was part. waiting for the. the, the, the but I bet you WWE brought like. Uh, Fucking generators. generators. <laughs> <laughs> they took him back too, cabron, and they don't yeah. even leave it there for him. Yeah. But like, dude, he brought a song that was popular back in like 2017. Yeah. He's smart, too. He yeah, revamped yeah. the mute and that now the song, that song from 2017 is back up in the charts. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, crazy. The, the marketing, the marketing behind all that is dude, he's smart. Genius. He introduced a lot of people to him by even going old catalog. So that way they go. Oh, 2017. Let's go to that catalog. So now they went from 2017 17, and then follow up it. to current. <laughs> yeah. Smart, bro. Yeah, yeah, the marketing, the marketing behind all that. Es increíble. And I think people are now, especially in the American market, they're starting to realize that like Puerto Ricans have money, will spend money, and there is a huge yeah. market because there's millions. Like Puerto Ricans are yeah, that's, everywhere. Like, that stereotype is still like, oh, you guys are from an island, you're poor. That yeah. stereotype is finally starting yeah. to like, hey, idiots. Yeah. I hate it when it's even. Have you come across this? The the, and I've come across the 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 Puerto Rican person that like stereotypes the whole Puerto Rican thing, but they use it when it's convenient to them. Like they're American. But whenever they get a chance to be like, oh, ya tú sabes como nosotros somos. Oh, We're loud. I yeah. got you. Like, I got you. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck are you when, talking yeah, about? When did you start representing this? Yeah. yeah you now, you're, now you're repping? Now like, you're repping. You're repping the bad stereotypes of it. Right. Yeah. Did, you're did, not, am I making sense? What yeah, I'm you're saying? making sense. You're, they're, only, yeah. they're, only, they're only bringing it to the, to the media. But the stereo, the, 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 stereo, negative, the they're negative proud stereotype. Of, they're, they're, they're proud, proud of stereotype. the negative stereotype. Of and it's the same with, with, with black people. And say, like, you know how black people are. They're right. late. I'm like, what are we doing? Like here? the dumb, the, like the, the one joke I hate the most that I hear all the time, and a lot of Puerto Ricans do it, and I don't know why. Is oh, uh, I was pulling up and I saw the Honda Civics in the in the parking lot. I know there's a bunch yeah. of Puerto. Shut up, shut up. We don't need, yeah. bro. I, <laughs> It's not a lot of it. We might yeah. drive Civics, but it's not on that level. Yeah. Like, it's just. It's CRVs now. Yeah, it's CRVs. It's CRVs. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Ah, uh, bro. It's just. We went from Civic to Accord now. Yeah, okay. yeah. We're up there. The Honda Accord. Is, Mazda, you're next. I love that Honda Accord, bro. That Honda Accord nice. fucking <laughs> pulled me out of so many. Yeah. Mazda, you, I know you're an Asian. Com- we're coming for it. We're taking, zoom, zoom, baby. Zoom, zoom. We want it. <laughs> we want yeah. a Mazda. No, but definitivamente que. And that's something that I learned. Uh, you know, finding my niche and finding my space. Because when I started, I was just making comedy general videos. But when I was like, yo, let me, I can take that nostalgia también que I'm, I'm having. And then I feel like that's what was connecting people to my content. Because not only was it funny, relatable, but it brings me a little bit peace of growing up or seeing my mom. Like I get messages where it's like, yo, my mom passed away in 2019, but I feel like, you know, you keep her alive oh, through your shit. Oh, that's, oh, you know? gotta hit. that's so gotta hit. I have, I have a lot of those, uh, 
uh, comments or DMs and I've printed them out and I put them in my bathroom and I have them there. So when one day I don't feel like filming, I go into that bathroom like, okay, you don't feel like filming, right? Like, just because you don't feel like it, but like, look at this. These are people that that you've moved and stuff, you like know, that, that are, and, and so I think that definitely, and so, you know, to be able to represent, esta, esta super cool. But what happened was that it went from like just Puerto Ricans to, Brazilians, Mexican, Colombians, and it's like, oh, we also, you know, we also grew up like this. And in my, and even like black, like my my masseuse, she's black, and she'd be like, Kelvin, I don't know what you're saying in your videos, but you're so funny, your expressions, and like I I understand what what the video is about, and that's when I realized like. <laughs> This is, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, it, this is like beyond. Esto es como que beyond just you know. Ah, esto, this is what I relatable to. So, yeah. you know, okay, otras culturas, and then that's when I started using more of like Latino because it's like, oh, it's not just Puerto Ricans, like yeah. Latinos you, in general. You, and you bond to that whole thing. When did your family started talking back to you after <laughs> after they kicked you out? <laughs> so it was probably <laughs> when that first video hit twenty <laughs> thousand. Mira, vi el video. Ah, está haciendo chavo. Está haciendo chavo. Está pegado. Man, eso es why. See, I'll be honest with you. For for that first year of 2021, it was the weirdest thing um, ever, and I had to learn how to like navigate that because I don't consider myself famous. Um, you know, maybe known, but yo no soy famoso. But it, it got to the point where like family members uh, out of the woodworks, uh, woodworks oh, treating man. me differently. And on that, la you tía, know, la tía que te que te echaba para el lado, lo de la tía que me echaba para el lado. Oh, mira que está aquí una foto y una foto contigo. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Que es esto? Like, you know, and. Yeah, so me, well, you know, me and my mom, uh, you know, después de par de meses que ya me votó, después, you know, we started talking or whatever, but still, like, even throughout making videos, you know, my family was like, oh, I was always the black sheep. Ah, que el bien es el loquito de la familia, he's just going to yeah. do whatever he's going to do. We still have hope for him. We still have hope for him. Yeah. And they then, have a savings account for his bail, bail his money. His bail money yeah, <laughs> savings yeah, account. Yeah, no, I was, I, yo, yo soy ese familia, and to this day, my, my parents are still sometimes a little worried, but now they've seen, um, and it, and they saw it when it didn't come from me. When like I I was at my I was with my dad in Puerto Rico in Isabela and like the most rural area you can find in Isabela I'm at a Walmart and I'm there and I'm with my dad and it's the first time somebody stops me and it's like yo can I get a picture though and my dad's seeing this and my dad's like <laughs> what is going on here what are you doing yeah you're buying drugs that you no papi yerba vida yerba vida but but yeah, that started to happen. Um, even the the school system uh, where my dad, uh, you know, is a teacher, they have like this chat with all the teachers, and they're like, "Oh, here's some uh, Friday humor," and they posted a video. And Shut it was, up! And it was my video. That's uh, gotta be cool. My mom just told me recently that uh, one of my grandmother's yo no sé qué person uh, showed her a video. It's like, "Yo, this guy's really funny. Like, you should watch his video." And she's like, "Oh my god, that's my grandson!" And like, when it started to happen uh. that way, where it's like. People don't know me and like f other friends of my friends were like, yo, you got to check this guy. He's funny. And they're like, yo, that's like, like, ese, ese primo hermano mío. Like, you wow. know what I mean? Yeah. That's when, uh, that's when everybody else started being like, okay, Kel, keep doing your videos. Keep doing your videos. You know, that's we like, get uh, the opposite. Our family members come. You guys curse a lot. You guys. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Or I have a famous uh, family member that <laughs> just decides, ah, let me murder somebody. Yeah, we got that kind of. And let me let me throw her <laughs> over a bridge. Jesus Christ! And, uh, it, <laughs> it's, it's funny because you said that you curse a lot. Because when I was first doing uh, comedy videos, I was cursing, and what ended up happening was. Uh, my mom says she wants to take credit for this because she did tell me, but I didn't really listen to her. But um, I actually <laughs> met, um, you know, Lejuan James, yeah. el comediante, right? Yeah, so course. I met his uh, his manager at the time. This was back in 2020 when I knew I wanted to do comedy. I, I reached out to him and um, I went to the radio station and he kind of gave me some mentorship. And the, the, like, the one advice he told me, he told me, don't tell anybody. So I'm saying it in this podcast. Yeah. Don't worry. Nobody's going to listen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody. All three of you people. people. This, is, this, is the same, yeah. this is the same as not telling no, anybody, the best right? Thing, <laughs> no. The best thing is like, this is the this is our first like Spanish, uh, English podcast. Yeah. They pretty much tapped out tapped already. already. Yeah, yeah, you're good. <laughs> so whatever you say. Okay, I'm with that, so that, the that, three that are hanging in there, pay attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so basically he told me like, hey, if you want to get a, uh, if you want to work with big brands and you want to, you know, get some big money, he showed me a picture of uh, a text message with Lejuan with one of the deals that he had closed with Advent Health. 
and I saw those numbers, and I'm not going to say the number, but it was like a nice number, high five figures number just yeah. for one video. Yeah. And I was like, so pretty much what you're going to pay for the delivery of your baby. <laughs> yes, yeah. pretty much. Y yo dije, oh, shoot. And that's when I was like, okay, let me see if I can do comedy, pero sin hablar malo. And then that's when I was able to like start working with like companies like Goya and like, you know, but I, but I also believe you have to be true to who you are. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> oh, geez, I'm like, if I can get, but because of the <laughs> well, thing, uh, never because, mind. Because, because, I was having hope for Goya. I would love a Goya no, project. Because the thing is, if you like, for example, I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't necessarily have to cuss, but sometimes if I, si se me sale una palabra mala, like if I'm doing, if I ever do a stand up or share a story and I, se me va a salir una palabra mala because that's yeah. just who I am, but I just don't, I don't constantly cuss all the time. That's just yeah. not who I am. So I was like, if I can tone it down, then that's fine. Pero si una persona que habla malo and that's the way that people will relate to you, then, you know? You take that hit, bro. Yeah, take the hit. Here's the thing. Comment doesn't understand this. <laughs> It's like I decided to do stand up because I want to say what I want to say, and however it comes out, that's how I'm going to say it. Yeah, I've had so many people. Hey, you can get so much fun. Can you do a clean show? Can you do a clean show? It's like, yeah, I could do a clean show. I don't want to do it. I could do it. Right. It's so, oh, but there's more money into it. Yeah, but then I wouldn't feel comfortable. Claro. Like I don't want to chase the money. You gotcha. know what I mean? I just it's the freedom I do. of creating. I do clean comedy. <laughs> yeah. You know I was trying you know I was supposed to get him on the show uh, when we did our show at the improv? Yeah. At, oh yeah. He was yeah. supposed to be on it. But, you know, NBA superstar over here decided to uh, you know, put on some uh his skills and ended up breaking his collarbone. Why? <laughs> Look, I don't know if they can see it. You can see that? <laughs> How the hell do you break your collarbone playing basketball? I was like, hey, man, you gonna come through the show? He's like, I'm in the hospital. I was like, oh, oh Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> yeah, dude, honestly, that was that, that is the hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my life, porque this happened last year. How did you break your collarbone? <laughs> it's oh, a, it's, oh, it's not that. It's not like a big, good story either. Yeah, it's not like a... Oh, uh, oh. it's a... Uh, Oh, really? <laughs> I was yeah. carrying a gallon of leche. <laughs> no, dude, I, I was playing basketball at a 24-hour fitness, and I thought I was fucking Michael Jordan, y estaba jugando, and like some, he was older, he's probably like late 50s, mm -hmm. uh, he was a shorter dude, and like I bump into his uh, shoulder, I try to steal the ball, and my clavicle just hit right on his shoulder, y eso se escuchó como pa, and it shattered in like four pieces aquí. I, I've, and the, the crazy thing is, this is what happens, man. So the way this story unfolds is literally, I'm training for a triathlon. So I'm like in the best shape of my life. I have the competition in a week. And then, so a <laughs> couple of days right before this happens, I'm getting some of my most viral videos are happening. This is last year, the beginning of oh, last year. No. So I'm building this momentum. I get a call from a producer from Telemundo. It's like, hey, we want you on a, a reality show, um, but it's in Mexico. We're going to shoot for a couple of weeks. Uh, you need to get your passport. That's so from like, Jorge Masvidal, bro. That, uh, the, really? <laughs> yeah, he did a he did it, one of those reality like shows reality in show. Mexico. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> So, so I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is my big break. This is the moment like yo estaba esperando. And I, I go to, I go get my passport. Um, and then after, after that, also I get another call from Goya and it's like, Hey, we want to actually do a <sighs> promo campaign. We're finally ready. Oh, after a year of like, <laughs> after a year of hustling them, calling them, trying to get a brand deal. Like literally the day after I get the call from Telemundo, uh, Goya's like, oh, we want to work with you. And I'm like, oh, my God, everything is just happening all at once. I'm so excited. And then uh, my sister's boyfriend was like, yo, you want to go play ball? I was like, I already worked out, but sure, let's go. And we had played like three games in. Uh, we had won all those games, but I'm the type of person I'm so competitive that like I want more. I, I would I'll play for hours. I was like, yeah, let's go play one more. E so I remember I posted a video <laughs> during uh, we won the game. During the break, I post the video. I go back and play. Ni pa minuto. I break it, and the first thing I think is it's over. So, it's all over. So let me ask you this: the second thing you thought was, "Damn, bro, I can't do the show with Kermit and Pedro." Oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he goes. Telemundo, Goya. So Kermit. you're so you're in the ho you're in the hospital. How long did it take uh, the nurses to to calm you down from all the crying <laughs> of, of all those opportunities just? <laughs> Flush down the drain, dude. Honestly, I was I was in I was in shock. 
Yo, the way <laughs> I was in shock. I was in shock for a while. It's like for that moment, I felt like somebody shot me and like I died. And the next <sighs> eight months is like, a, it's like I was in a trance. I Because I spent, this was me throughout for at least three, almost four months straight. This was me. I see in a chair sleeping like this, sitting here. <laughs> My mom would grab me, take me to the bathroom, wipe my ass when I took a shit. Oh no! Oh, no. Back. I'm not oh, feeding no. me. I'm just like I'm just like you know. Wait, time out. Like, oh, wait, you still space. got your other arm? What's wrong with your left arm? Yeah. Because lo que pasó fue que I um like this clavicle area, it's okay. all tied together. So he broke it in four pieces. Remember? So this. it wasn't okay. like a typical clavicle break. Like we'll it's split. just one side. Yeah, and a lot of times they don't even do surgery. They ended up putting like a metal plate with like mm -hmm. fourteen or thirteen screws. They even leave the bones <laughs> floating around. Yeah, this shit. This motherfucker's like glass man from Unbreakable. Yeah. <laughs> His fucking brittle ass bones. <laughs> y, y que pasa? So I'm there, and um, you can use you. You can't like everything moves with the, you don't realize how oh your my clavicle, god like, going like this with my left arm i'm moving my how right long, clavicle how long oh. was your mom wiping that ass wiping she, that she ass. was wiping that ass for like three minutes. oh my god mom god. you are oh, saying you know you know oh. like you know i'm like you know i'm tw i'm 26 now i'm 25 year old fucking mangan song i see <laughs> just like mommy like, eso te, eso, that'll that'll just did you did you get to the point? It's like I don't want to even eat. I don't want to eat. <laughs> I don't want to. So do I don't want to no. go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. So I constipate. So this is what happened. I constipated. Tomando my little Percocets. That shit constipates you too. Yeah. So I was constipated for like two weeks. Joey pa. And then I go to the bathroom, bro. I push so fucking hard. Que esta vena se me brotó, and I'm feeling like I'm about to pass out. And you then, almost had an aneurysm, bro. <laughs> he almost broke his other. Out and just trying to take not it. other collarbone. He no, almost like, burst his jugular. I yeah. I go. I, I and then I, I leave the bathroom. I'm talking to my mom, and the vein around here in my head is like getting really big. And my mom's like, <laughs> "Are you okay?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I don't. I'm starting to feel so good." So she had to take me to the hospital. And then even after breaking my clavicle, I ended up in the hospital like multiple times after that because oh of that God. situation. Then I had a situation where I went vertigo. So for about a full month, oh, that's the worst. everything was dizzy. And then after that, um, I started having issues with my hands. So I, um, the nerves in my hands, uh, this was like maybe six months after the nerves in my hand, I couldn't close my hand. Oh my God. And I'm still recovering from that. Uh, I, I couldn't bro, move. I couldn't grip anything. How the fuck are you, bro? You have what a, a great story. support system. Great support. Because I would have. You would have come up. You would do that for me. I would have what? Help me clean my culo, bro. You think gancho de aquí. I'd be like, <laughs> hey, it's over, Kermit. Don't worry. I'll race your kid. Y te dejo guindando así, dando vuelta. But I'll you know, do the podcast with you still hanging. <laughs> Just yeah. No, but I'll, I'll tell you that the, uh, the, the toughest part was like. I have failed so much in my life de todas las cosas que yo había hecho. And when I finally have momentum, when I'm finally realizing what I want to do. When you see that, that, yeah, just that like it just phase. all stripped away from me. But let me tell you, I learned so many beautiful things about myself. And like just throughout that process, uh, I would, I wouldn't not go through it again just because of what I learned. And let me tell you, like throughout that time is when I started like picking up a book, the stand up. And I started like reading stand up. I was reading about God, and I feel like in, during that process, like I grew my faith. And I'm like, you know, what? everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And let me tell you, I got stories. Like, tengo historias que me han pasado en ese momento que they're funny because usually you don't expect them for a 25, 26 year old. So, gente más bien. Like, I ended up having to do a colonoscopy también. Oh, yeah. Like, those so are many, fun. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, super fun. <laughs> you know, I have all these things happening during this time. You que, haven't had one yet. Not yet. Oh, puppy. <laughs> you know, You're 40. Yeah. It's time. I'm going to record it for you. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to be there. What are you oh, talking about? Cool. <laughs> So todo eso, I feel like I feel like those are all my my secret weapon on why I don't care. Like porque a mí se me I like yo no tengo miedo de you know de hacer nada porque I've I've seen what's at the worst. Like did you, you know, did you realize who your friends are during those three months? Um, or, or was everybody still? Because there's a lot of times that you have a level of success and people ride that 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 yeah. that wave. They're clout chasing some of them and. And some of them, you, but you know who the true are. Yeah. When you're this high, 
and then you go straight down. Yeah. So I've always kind of kept uh, after high school, I always kept a small group of friends. Mm -hmm. que, you know, I was always rocking with. And during that time, siempre me quedé más o menos uh, with the same friends. But what I learned is that in the beginning, they're coming over because I can't, you know, I'm bored and stuff. But then eventually everybody like goes on with their life with their, and yeah. they can't just. You know, and I'm just, I feel like literally like I died. And I'm like, this is what it would be like if I died. Like these people love me. They care about me, but they can't come over every day to keep me company. Because the thing is, my mom stayed with me, cuidándome, but then she had to go back to Puerto Rico to yeah. work. So when I was, I couldn't even drive yet, but when I was able to finally like wipe my own ass by myself, that's when that, that was her. Yeah, like, was out. Okay, I can leave. <laughs> she was like. Gracias, señor. Te lo prometo. That's exactly yeah. how she was. She's like, she's like, yo te quiero, pero estoy cansada de ir tú. Wow, bro, and what a saint. So, and durante ese tiempo, um, you know, I was, I spent months just by myself at the house, and like, it's easy to go crazy. You know what I mean? Eh, pero, you know, that's that's when you you learn, and and I realized the the art of being truly present and not worrying about. I was always the person. You know, they, they talk about how, like, yeah, you know, you want to have goals, but are you present? And I even realized, Kawe, like when you're taking a shower, you're thinking about what you have to do after you take a shower. Yeah. But in that moment, I'm taking a shower, just can't do anything. Like, there's nothing in my mind. I, I learned to truly be present. I learned to find You got to call people. Funny. The thing is, like, That's what I yeah. do. like in, no, in the shower. He calls you oh, when call he's them in the FaceTime. Shower? Bro, FaceTime. El cabrón uh, este will call you, you FaceTime. For you? I can do that for He'll you. He'll cheer you up. I'll cheer you, you up. shampoo. Hey, Bobo. Man, I'll call you. I'll FaceTime you. I got you, bro. Don't even say say less. Yeah, bro. Say less. I got you. You gotta Facetime your boys. I'll Facetime your boys. That's when shower. you know who that's your boys are. You know who your I got you. Are. Yeah, I'll hit you. Don't up show. You don't gotta show them your, your whole just, thing. Matter, just matter. just upper. Just upper. Yeah, yeah so. I got you, bro. Give me a little. Give me a little. <laughs> he's like he's like a. Yeah. I gotta change my phone number. Try, <laughs> no, no, pero pero. Eso eso para mí fue. It's even weird talking about it because I haven't like I haven't really thought about like esa esa etapa. Yeah. But uh, when you can find the funny during those moments, man, like you, you realize yeah. you know, life, you can't take it too seriously. So follow up okay. It's also like the way like the universe, like I believe in the way the universe works sometimes. Oh, do you? I do. I really do. Like okay. that whole, I know it sounds like a nightmare but the whole, but maybe you doing the show in Telemundo wasn't your call. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't the time. It wasn't, it wasn't the time. That's maybe that's says. like the universe like, yo, let me, I'm going to help. I know it's going to be extreme. Good there's luck a, not wiping your ass for phrase, three months. But there's a there's a Puerto Rican phrase that to this day I still use. Si es para ti, es para ti. If it's for you, it's going to be for you. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. So, no, pero, but, but, yeah. So eso fue lo. Yo creo que lo más difícil. And, and uh, to add to that story really quick, yo, you know, I'm, I spent all these months, and the most beautiful thing is that. All these other uh, Hispanic Puerto Rican pages, they're resharing my old videos. Yeah. Just to kind of keep me alive in social media. My mom's freaking out. Everybody's like, ah, oh, this guy. Because the biggest fear that somebody has on social media when you're posting content is to stop posting content because you think people will forget about you. You're dead. Your account, social media, like, la red funciona. You got to be consistent. And so I always had this belief that I'm like, yo, I'm, yo, yo me say, I'm motherfucking baby Kel. Like, I got this. I can make a viral video cuando se me paran los pelos. Like, yeah. cuando, whenever I want to, I can do this. And my mom was always like, oh, post something. I'm like, my, I can. The week that I finally felt better to uh, to film again, to post, that week I filmed my most three viral videos in the same week. I grew like 10, no, 20,000 followers in two weeks. Look at that. The first week after months of not having made any videos, it's because I had. Did you explain to people, hey, I was playing basketball. I yeah, destroyed my. Yeah. You do lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, lives. <laughs> so. Have you come across in in the era of, of people chasing the algorithm? Have you come across people taking your bit? Como que taking my bit. Como que. Let's say you got your grandmother bit yeah. with the chancleta, whatever. This person's doing the same exact bit. Exact. Verbatim. Verbatim. Yeah. But it's just the guy. Or the rice bit with the ketchup. I'm just yeah. doing it. Yeah. Screen, so shot by shot. So the thing is que when it, so the way, so in comedy, like back in the day comedy, that's like a no go. Like you, you get canceled. Isn't that oh, what that's, happened to that's, like? That's, that's the still, biggest. That's, that's still that's the biggest. Carlo, Carlo Mencia didn't he have that issue? Yes. Right. So they canceled you know, the show because of that. BS. Yeah. So stand up comedy, comedy like that's that's the one rule you don't break. Like you, if if you get caught doing that, you're like 
your the community like doesn't fuck with you anymore. Like, the comedy also, community or, will. The so comedy will, community yeah, will, go. but the audience won't, won't. because yes. the audience goes, oh, but he does so much, but they don't yeah. understand. I like, go, there's there's codes. It's like there's yeah. sneak codes. You don't snitch. You yeah. don't steal somebody's jokes. Mora, hey, morales, morals. There's yeah, morals. They, you, there's, those those kind of people don't have morals, and they don't they don't now, they don't care about the they don't they don't feel like there's any consequences. But then but then they go and bitch and cry on the internet, saying how people are attacking them. But then here they are doing the same yeah, joke yeah. of of Richard Pryor. And there's or parallel whoever. thinking. Don't get there's there parallel, parallel thinking, there thinking there is, yeah. because. You and me, all three of us, were Puerto Ricans. We we can all relate. Even the people that watch your videos, they can relate with that. Claro. So you have the story of your grandmother. Pa, 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 pa. I probably have a similar story of of my grandmother. He probably has a different grandmother, but similar story. Claro. It's whoever puts it out first kind of deal. You know what I mean? Like Absolutely. I've seen videos that people put it out first, and I'm like... I, claro. I sh- I no, have. and I'll even tell you just recently, I have a good friend. He also makes like Hispanic type of videos. And he did a video about like uh, Latina moms uh, when it comes to therapy. And I filmed my video the day prior, but my video was a little bit longer. And then he posted his the next day. And I'm like, ah, shoot, I still posted mine. But anybody could easily be like, oh, he copied him. But yeah. it's like, no, nah, because I filmed mine yesterday. But the thing is, when it comes to like, you know, stand up. Uh, comedy like I've learned um, just through reading and, and, and talking to uh, like stand up comics es la cultura de when it comes to uh, stand up comedy right and but the thing is TikTok changed that for social media comedy you see TikTok changed that like that rule doesn't really exist on social media as much anymore because but it does because there was there was the kid uh, that would do and I can't think of the comic's name. Uh, he's a stand-up comic. It was him, and then it was him, but as a little kid. And they just take his audio out and TikTok, and people are just lip-syncing what Loud. he wrote and what he did. So you're still stealing. Yeah, but the thing is, the, com- the th- with, with TikTok, the community... Um, so the, the whole idea with TikTok is if I made a viral video, everybody was copying and everybody was doing yeah. different versions of it. So that became... Like you didn't have to tag the person that you got inspired for back before TikTok on Instagram comedy, though, everybody would tag inspired by fulano. Yeah. TikTok kind of changed that because everybody, the app is literally about copying each other. You did something that was funny. Now everybody does their own version of it. Some people copy it word for mm. word, whatever. And that's how TikTok kind of changed that when yeah. it comes to uh, social media, like comedy skits or just cosas así, verdad? Um, and so in that space, you would see it a lot where, for example, if a, a bigger social media comedian ripped off somebody that didn't have a lot of followers videos, and then they're seeing that, you know, they're they're loving this guy and oh my God, that video was hilarious. And then they see this guy's video. Maybe they don't notice the dates. They're like, oh, you copied fulano. Yeah. And, but the thing is like in social media comedy, I'm not talking about like stand up. And then you're doing and you're posting on social media. I'm more like comedy skits, like TikTok yeah, type yeah. of videos. It's very different because everybody literally like everybody can like so many people rip each other off that it's like it's like it's happened to me. Like yeah. I just recently had a video that Los Latinos despidiéndose. And uh, I guess some Brazilian girl did the exact same video in the exact same poses. And a whole bunch of people were tagging me because I'm a bigger creator than her. And I'm just laughing. I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, she did a great job. Like I, I, I generally so don't. So it's more of a, it's more of a, you know. Homage. You consider it yeah, like an homage. homage yeah, or like, like I, it doesn't. Like, it doesn't to me. I want their heads. <laughs> See, to me, I want blood. I want me, blood. To me, it doesn't really bother me because oh. it's like you know, you no have one's, inner peace, Kel. That's what it you is. Know, yeah. maybe that's what it is. That but, damn collarbone, yeah, whatever. That fucking that thing. collarbone. But, I also, but you know, I also. I'm bloodthirsty. You know, yo te, yo te, yo te voy a decir que I also feel like I have so much confidence in me que es como que. You can copy the same video, but you're not going to make the same expression. I know. I got me. confidence, too. Like, to know how, like <laughs> you can't, like, when I have an idea for a skit, that's why, like, I could give you, like, um, a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to say my skit. I've shared certain skits that I knew would go viral with certain people, and if they ever, like, 
did it before me like i would do mine but i know mine is gonna kill because the idea generated from me like i just i know that i'm your, good. it's your voice it's yeah your voice. like i yeah. know i'm so good at doing what i'm doing and and like you know yeah and i'm not gonna lie to you like you know you know the way i see que, you know in the very beginning like I was copying like almost word for word uh, other comedy skits que yo veía because that's you heard it was. first, people. Yeah. Baby Cal, he's stealing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Market, market. Yeah. Pero, pero te digo que eh, era una cosa que I thought. So this is funny because like I had copied this one guy's video, and then everybody was like, um, not everybody, but it was like two or three people caught it. Yeah. But then they thought that that guy was the original creator, and then I seen another guy who had posted the video way before. And it was like all three of us, and then I saw a fourth and a fifth. All of us had done oh, the same shit. version this of that video. It's in a multiverse. It's, yeah. like, it's like a music when you hear a song. You're like, oh, wait, the Beatles did that too? And like, what yeah. the hell? No, but, <laughs> but that's because TikTok changed that. So people that have been in, in social media comedy or comedy like way before uh, TikTok, they feel some type of way about that. But all these newer people... It, you don't you don't really you don't really like I have conversations with new brand new TikTok creators que explotado millions of followers and then I know people that have been doing this comedy skits for six seven years yeah como que that that that's that's just hey man you can just say our website name yeah. that's fine you don't, have to, you don't have to shit on us yeah <laughs> we don't do skits we don't do <laughs> pero, pero, and, and when it comes to like TikTok it really did change yeah change that that um now the thing is though you can have like if I do a well-produced uh, comedy skit and you see all the different camera angles, that's tough to replicate. Yeah. You know, if it's like a 15 second video, you know, a lot of times it's like we're all doing versions of whoever came up with it. That's just the way yeah. the culture is on social media because of TikTok. It's just meme videos like they're just memes. But when you have a full laid out, you know, skit with dialogue and script, it's all that's different. That's, you know, there's more into that. And that's not something that anybody can go just go and rip off. This is know? full time now. So th you don't have a job. Like, you're not dealing with phone calls, herbal life. You're not selling herbal selling, life again, right? <laughs> you're not selling door to door solar nah, panels. Nah. You're not selling. Yeah. And if you want to lose weight, you know what I mean? <laughs> Actually, I, um, yeah. So before I broke my clavicle, this, <laughs> this, bro, this is crazy. But like a week before I broke my clavicle, I quit my job to go full time making videos. Of course you did. And, uh, <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. Everything all there. But you know, I was really blessed because three you months. You hated that job. I hated the job. But the thing is, uh, well, I was doing at this point. I was doing a part time job. Okay. And doing videos on the side. Um, and then when uh, around February March, I quit the job to go full time. The three months prior, which was like November, December, January, uh, yeah, around that time frame. Uh, Facebook had introduced uh, reels and at the time I was posting reels on Facebook and when I saw what I was going to get paid, you know, I think the first check was like seven grand. The next check was like eight grand. Um, Kermit, what the fuck are you doing? What bro? am I doing, bro? I, what am I, I doing don't... here, bro? Yeah. We got to do skits. That's the, you're throwing reels that, on that, Instagram. No, but that went away. That, that went away. Like oh. they just stopped it. Um, they just stopped it. Like they gave me $10, $10, <laughs> but they stopped that. They stopped that just recently. But I'm telling you, like I was making money like that. And I was like, I'm going to quit You think my that's job. changing that all that revenue in social media is going to start to change, right? That. That pay is starting to get yeah, cut. Yeah, it, it had to, it, it just stopped. And the thing is, I love comedy. I love social media. I love storytelling. I love film. But I also, I like understanding social media and the human behavior behind it. And I knew, like, I always I was always preparing for when it would stop. Porque it's the more saturated something becomes, like, yeah. the demand is not as big anymore. And so when you have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all these platforms is gen anybody can make so much content now that like you can make content, you make content, everybody makes content. Then it starts to, uh, you know, saturate the platform. And so now they're like, wait, we can't pay everybody money yeah. for just anybody and their mom to just make a video. Well, so it's now like, com it's like comedy kind of things. Like, why are we going to increase the pay? There's always somebody that that will take less. Yeah. There's oh Yeah. So, eso so. Lo que está pasando. and so now they're, they're favoriting, you know, people who put more effort into videos like, OK, well, so many people make videos. Now we have to like who are who's like what's who's a good, quality, like what's quality. what's quality now. So it's more quality based. And Facebook, they can't pay what they were paying yeah. as many people because they're not making they're losing. They're, they're losing. losing a lot of money. Yeah. So the metaverse, now, the metaverse, the metaverse, the metaverse they <laughs> fell. <laughs> they fell 
Face first, Ooh, face bro. first. Bro, NFTs imagine. y todo. Pero qué pasa? Yeah. There's an asshole that bought real estate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you fucking ah, you dick. idiot! You wasted You're your life. You're by yourself in your <laughs> little <laughs> 3D, pixel. 3D pixel. <laughs> Did you buy something? In Did you buy real estate? No, you, you know, oh, in the no. metaverse. I, I was, I was <laughs> next learning to it. Snoop Dogg. I was, <laughs> I was learning it, but I, I, I didn't just, make sense. No, nah, I just stick to stick to what's working. No, it's called being I'm, smart <laughs> for yeah. once. Someone's like, all right, listen. Pero, pero yeah, and then now Facebook is doing a thing where it's like uh, ads on reels. So now they're putting ads on your videos, and then you get 50% split from that. Yeah. Kind of like how YouTube would do it. My daughter's making money from from uh, not Herbalife. <laughs> YouTube. What's the, <laughs> what's Herbalife. the, what's the fresh, fresh market or whatever, whatever food delivery thing? Instacart? No, I, I, who know, whatever she does on Twitch, but she oh, she I gets her money and she puts a lot of time, and it's funny seeing her getting excited. It's like, oh, I got paid. How much you get? One hundred and forty dollars. I'm like, I right, <laughs> come sit over here. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta understand value of this is how much time you're putting in, and this is what you're getting back. Yeah. So. It's to you. It's like yeah, it's one hundred forty dollars. <laughs> You're doing what you love, which I've always told her: do what you love, and it won't feel like a job. But if eventually, I need you to move out of this fucking. House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's that's a little different. Yeah, you know. But I'll, I'll be honest. You know, when I when I went full, so before going full time, I had a full time job, and I quit that job. I got a part time job, and then I. Uh, I got a part-time job to make videos and I was living off of like 1200 bucks a month, rented a room. I was like, you know what? If I can make comedy videos for the rest of my life, this makes me so happy. I was literally just doing that. I was uh, working a nine to two over the phone. I was donating sperm and I was <laughs> wait time out time this Kel, one should have started Kel, that damn it Kel. stop that, that's wait what an I, hour man. and a half, hour and half in. in and this we is where you drop go if this at the last fucking minute <laughs> what the minute, fuck are you doing I gotta go guys no, uh, time out I I bro. Go. bro he fuck, <laughs> fucking <laughs> yo you gotta you guys gotta watch for part two no 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 you guys gotta no, we me can't go long bro you crazy my wife is gonna fucking kill me this fucking guy and I donated sperm donated sperm what the with that being said, thank you for listening to uh, episode uh, 124 of Nah, Dude. Baby good. Kel, make sure you check them out on Instagram. All social medias, right? Instagram, Instagram TikTok, uh, TikTok uh, <laughs> Facebook. Uh, make sure you follow us on NahDude.com. Follow uh, Kermit Gonzalez. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe again. Tell two friends. <laughs> um, buy some shit from our shop. If not, I don't give a shit. I don't make money off that. No, we don't. But we would like to see you we guys like rocking yeah. the gear. Hey, announcement coming up on next episode. We'll let you know where the next stand-up gig is at. It just got set up. Uh, oh, shit. You got a stand-up gig? No, no. no we, we need to get him. Oh, no, no. We're going to get him. We got to get him. Yeah, yeah. But we, I got to fucking. But we'll need I'm that. not going to do this on camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You got anything to say? No, no. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, man. Thanks for stopping by. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.